Well, <laughs> what has happened there? Looks like we're gone live without me pushing the button. Never mind. Hey, Patsy, why don't you roll that show? <laughs> talking blues we'll get that thing working in a minute no problem whatsoever but first i want to introduce our guest tonight you know every last wednesday of the month we have a roving reporter she comes in and tells you jennifer jones jennifer noble comes in and tells you what is happening on the scene on the blues scene any gigs that are happening and any news low down up down and dirty and clean but tonight before we go any further our our next guest our first guest would be a uh, blues baritone crooner and um the taste for blues and the siding guitar and the harp like you're not seeing coming way out of massachusetts would you please welcome to the out of the green room please welcome colin taylor pratt come on in colin what's up listen man Hi. how's it going it's going great it's going great yeah you, great. you see what happened damn we went through all that situation sound check and shit just uh, sorry stuff just happens <laughs> Stuff happens like that, but that's all right. I had it going earlier, and then some, for some reason I turned it off. Yeah. And there we are. But that's quite all right. We'll, we, we'll make that happen. So listen, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, yeah? Yeah, I got I, I got uh, plans for a tour if, if that even comes to fruition, actually. And so hopefully it does, because I'm working with a booking agency uh, eventually if, if that comes to fruition. It might not, but if it does, then I got a tour. Mm -hmm. well, we'll, get to, we'll get to all that information in just a bit. First of all, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, uh, when, I know you played other styles, but when did you become interested in playing the blues? Oh, uh, that was probably about like 13, around 13, 16. When I got into the blues, I first heard Robert Johnson, and that was that. And I, I really got hooked on it, and and later on, uh, I just I just started digging into deeper into different stuff, you know. Yeah. And I found I found out about Willie Dixon. I found out about Blind Lemon Jefferson, all the folk guys. Then I found out about the Chicago blues guys like Helen Wolf uh, and Muddy Waters and stuff. Yeah. And that's 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 where it all came together and everything just started clicking. And you started you started just I'm gonna stay off camera for a minute. Leave me off camera, Patsy, because I'm working on a couple of things. And you started um, playing the blues. Did you start playing in your local area, or did you start playing at bars and clubs? What? How'd that how'd that start? Well, I and how old were you? <laughs> started. Uh, I started playing. Um, open mic nights with my drummer Mike uh Mike Michaels or uh he, he's he's thinking about going by Mike Mike now mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh he he uh he actually uh we found each other through uh through through an ad that I put out I put out a drummer ad as a little ad in a music store and and we just met and it instantly clicked and we started playing open mic nights and then yeah. later, later on, he hooked me up with another drummer that was doing uh, live stuff with me at a certain point. We did uh, we did uh, performances in Worcester, Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay. Oh, we've got a Worcester here in England as well. Yeah, they do. They have uh, where I am right now is Westminster, Massachusetts. They have one of those, in, and I I believe in England as well. Yeah, in London, that's where our, our, our prime minister and all those, all the heavyweights uh, stay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, 
Sorry, I'm still trying to work on that television. That's all. That's why I'm being a little bit, um, a little bit off, off camera and what have you. But so, so Colin, you, you were playing before you started playing the blues. You were playing a style that's um, like country and. Um, oh, I started with country. My parents. Did you? My parents raised me on country, so I was I was forced to listen to country and play country at a certain point in my time, before yeah. e before even the blues actually. And and I was also made to listen to classic rock first, but that was that was just an intro into like what could where the blues and all the roots come from, you know. Because it's all connected, you know. It's all connected, and and as much as we don't want to admit it, but it's all connected, you know. Um, all the blues and all the genres, jazz, definitely avant-garde, avant-garde. It's all, it's all connected. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, bl well, bl you know, blues is is the grandfather of a and has a lot of lot, lot of babies, doesn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? The blues is the grandfather of a lot of styles of music. I mean, they yeah. said was it jazz and blues had a child called rock and roll, and it goes on and on from there. You know, yeah. and um. And it's it's a beautiful genre to, to to play, and it's also a bit of a lifestyle, don't you think? You know, it's it can be a bit like that as well. I mean, you're a blues man; you look the part, that's for sure. You know. Yeah, definitely. And you have a lot of people that play the same genre as you. A lot of friends that do the same thing as you play the play the same circuit, so to speak, as you. Yeah, I do. I have a lot of friends that um, that I talk to in uh, Tennessee, even that. Uh, that are in, yeah. in the Tennessee scene. I, I I particularly I particularly talked about like collaborating with different people, you know? Mm -hmm. Um and there are people in the Tennessee scene. I I'm mm -hmm. uh friends I'm good friends with uh Tony Holiday, people like that. Mm -hmm. I know these people. I know mm -hmm. uh who else do I know? I know uh I know a few others, um Yeah. But not, not really How far is Tennessee from you? Tennessee from a, that's a bit of a ways, isn't it? Massachusetts is a big state anyway. I mean, United States is huge. How far is that yeah. from you, Tennessee? Uh, Tennessee is probably miles away. I don't know exactly how many miles, yeah. but, but uh, I uh -huh. I actually want to move there for the Memphis and Tennessee blues. That's right. Yeah. Because there's a lot of Tennessee blues musicians that do kind of down home blues, and that's kind of what I'm into. So I feel like. When I when I have the money to travel, I want to go down there and make a pilgrimage mm -hmm. down there and actually try to try to fit in with that group of people because mm -hmm. there's a community there's a community of the stuff I want to do. Yeah. But not that Massachusetts Massachusetts is my home, but not yes. that it's not not the place for me. There's a lot of great stuff in Massachusetts. I just I find myself being drawn towards Tennessee right now. Yeah. And you said you said you, that the style of music is down home blues. I do, that down, that's... I do down home blues. I do stuff that's influenced by country. I do a lot of stuff that. So like if okay. I, like for example, like I do, I add the the country sharp in there. The, the sharp. It's sharp because it has the sharp in it. Okay. So that's that's. You can add that to any chord, and you can you can do things like this. That's that's country, or you could do that's okay. also. Okay. Well, you know what? That's a great time for us for you to play a song for us. Why don't you? Uh, <laughs> I put you on the spot, didn't I? Everyone, listen to Colin Taylor Platt on the guitar, right, so get fiddle. Go on, boy. I, I'm gonna play a song by uh, Muddy Waters. If that's all right. Okay. Uh, wh why not? Take your time now, okay? Go ahead, baby. Well, I wish I was a catfish. Swimming in the deep blue sea. Well, I have all you. Who's looking 
that one absolutely now that one is um is that a muddy waters tune yeah it's uh it's um catfish blues catfish blues and muddy waters yeah 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 there's a lot of people that sung that one though isn't it you know so <laughs> that's a classic man absolute classic yeah uh, jimmy hendrix did versions of it um i didn't hear that one yeah, Jimi Hendrix did a version of it on his blues album. It, like, literally, he actually did a album that was called Blues, and it had a uh, Voodoo Child um, blues on it. Uh, yes, that's and, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't actually got that one, actually. That is that is a classic that you need to have in your repertoire, isn't it? You know what I mean? Absolute classic. So, listen... Um, Tell me a little bit about the uh, the Blues Jets. Is that the band you you recorded your albums with? Yeah, um, I had people, session musicians, that were part of the Blues Jets ensemble, but I haven't been able to keep up with those people and keep in touch. So overall, I would say that um, that actually uh, the uh, Blues Jets um, mm -hmm. they they have been shrunk down to a more of a three piece. So three mm -hmm. pieces of, you know, they rotate too. Mm -hmm. They rotate. And yeah, they, yeah, they, they come in and out and there's, there's multiple people, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, who's available, and and if they're not available, there's there's somebody else to take us. A lot of times, the bands are not not always available. You know, the musicians are not are not always available, and you can you have to use who you have to use. But as long as you keep your original sound, you're good for that. You know, that you you yeah. get like a whole school of people, don't you? That you can work with. It's quite nice to interchange with people as well. You know, what I mean, sometimes it sounds slightly different because obviously they have their own playing styles, but you still got your own sound, don't you? You know. Yep, and, and we started out, interestingly enough, with with that first album, Blues or Sunrise. It's it's more heavily studio produced. I like mm -hmm. I nowadays I tend to like things that are a lot more unfiltered and raw, so mm -hmm. to speak. But yeah, the, cool. the, the first one, it was a lot more studio produced. It was a lot more pop oriented because when you hear pop, you, you hear clean cut, and that's, that's fine. Right. That's fine to have. That's that's fine yeah. to have. That's what I want to do with my first album, and I had session musician come and make it perfect, sp spick and span, you know. But the thing is, with that, you you get that kind of sound, and that's fine. But but um, like I had to just do kind of like interpretations of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I had like uh, you know. I had, I had basically, I had, uh, what I had was, um, I had basically like, um, you know, uh, interpretations of walk and blues. I did walk and blues. Mm -hmm. What else did I do? I, I did, um, a song that I wrote instrumental mm -hmm. called country blues and country blues is, I, I thought of the title. I named it after that Muddy Water song because I like Muddy Water so much. So I named it after the Muddy Water song, Country Blues. But it's a totally different song. It's my own arrangement. And okay. uh, the arrangement is, is, is a lot like uh, something that would be more country than than blues, actually. But I have these, okay. I do these things on it like... Yes. That's country. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But they still that, that that still that sounds still quite mm -hmm. that gives me that feeling of the blues as well though isn't it because that's where the two yeah, are meeting well, so closely isn't there it are different, you know? there are different parts of the blues uh -huh. that country like when you do or you do something like bb king or you do something bb king-ish there's still a little bit of country in there and there's also if you think about the blues, blues is also, there's so many gospel roots in the blues too. Because the only thing that's older than the blues, I would say, and most people don't think about this as much as they, as much as they might want to or whatever, but the oldest thing is really gospel. And I had to listen to gospel growing up and, and you listen to gospel. And I think some of it, and then there are ancient types of music that, that, are influ that influence the way the blues sounds, you know, like ancient sounds that you, you never heard except for like passed down through generations and generations, yeah. like African music, oh, European yeah. music, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mostly yeah, like African. We, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you, you get the folk sound from the European music as well, don't you? Which, um, and which which the two would probably have merged at some point because if you've got the people coming over from from Europe um, uh, during the slave trade, for example, and they're coming out of Ireland and, and England and they're taking their Scottish and Irish Welsh sounds, the folk sounds, and they're playing their bits with the, and then the, the slaves are picking up the banjo from them. And, you know, they're kind of exchanging um, uh, uh, genres yeah. really naturally that's aren't they was, that's what i was trying to get at with 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 the with the, the immigration of everything like everyone's immigrating to different countries everyone's bound to combine what they have so like ancient times they combine different instruments and they combine different yeah. instruments with other instruments and they just mm -hmm. take them they put them together you know okay. and it's it's just part of part of uh the musical journey with human nature yeah. you know human yeah. the human race they just combine everything but listen you you did a you did a um a, an album called dig my grave grave digger colin yeah 
you need to tell me. I'm dying to know why. Where did that title come from, and what inspired it? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> it's so ridiculous, isn't it? I, it's not ridiculous in a bad way. It's just ridiculous in sort of like like a, like actually, I I had someone tell me one time that that the title sounded like 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 because when I came up with the album title, yeah, it was around when Co COVID just COVID had just started. <laughs> oh, I see. And, okay. And I, I think I was thinking of COVID and I was like, get me out of this situation. And uh -huh. I think I say, dig my grave, grave digger. If you're gonna uh -huh. make die if you're gonna make me pass away, just dig it already. Dig the grave exactly. already. Now, now, now that that was was that record did you record that live or did you just do each instrument um at separate times? You know, did you like all get in this in the room and it just jam all, and it play it? Live. Yeah, it was all live. That's the best. That's a great vibe, isn't it? It was all uh, recorded into one one take of all the people together doing the live stuff. One uh, take. Every yeah. song, one take. Well, no, not every song was one take, but we got one take from each cut because there was multiple songs. We had. We had different takes, but um, we took the song that was most, uh, the song, the take that was better, you know, the take yeah, that was better. of course. Better. Of course you do, yeah. And you you, you recorded that with um, someone that's there with you today, isn't it? Was that uh, Mr. Michaels? Yeah, Mr. Michaels. Does he want to show his face? <laughs> <laughs> Come on in there, Mr. Mike Michaels. I mean, he and had he a was, great influence was, on you, didn't he? He was on drums. He was on drums on that uh, on that album. <laughs> hey, man, what's happening? You're a legend. You're a legend. Hey, who? He, you've worked with some really cool people as well in the past, haven't you, Mr. Michaels? Yes, on occasion. Yeah, on occasion. Yeah. Well, you've done a great job working with with um, Colin as well, and we love what you guys are doing. Absolutely brilliant. So keep, keep doing it, it. Keep keep it up. <laughs> yeah, he's worked with a lot of people. He's worked with, you know, uh, he's, he's worked with uh, uh, Little Joe Cook, Luther Guitar Jr. Johnson. Yeah. Uh, King, King Colton, too. He's worked with a lot of legendary people. And he's got a lot of experience, and we just met, and it, it clicked. You guys just clicked. That's right. That that uh, that's a, a musical part partnership. You can't get any better than that. And sometimes it gets really heavy, and sometimes it's just so cool to have. You know. Listen. Um, can I ask you to play another song? Would do you mind, please? Oh, of course. Um, that's great. I have, a, I have a faster song for you. Okay. Cool. Solid 
Okay, looks like we're having a little bit of technical problem. Oh, here we go. That's okay. That's okay, Colin. No problem. We've got a little bit. He's he's lost his um, he's lost his what you call something it. Uh, he's, Colin's I, lost his 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 technical um. For, that's from, okay, to Colin. I, Go ahead someone, and fix that. Someone tried to call me. I don't know what happened. Oh, All right, that was, I, that's the problem. You forgot to put an that. air. No worries, man. You want to go ca carry on? Doesn't matter. It's all live. You know what I'm saying? It's all live, man. So he's on. He's on. He's on. Um, he's still on a um, on a phone call. I did. I did show. Go ahead and play that video, Patsy. Well done. Thank you. No, it's just take the take take the um. I did move my mind by accident, I think.
Ano? Ay. Okay, that's it. Take off the mic. Okay, we've got multiple things going on here. That's Colin Taylor Platt playing there on the um, screen. He, we lost Colin. He's um, all the way from Massachusetts, and he was uh, recording on his, um, on his laptop, and, <laughs> and what happened was he just uh, disappeared. Someone called him, and then there he goes. But no problem, because we've got loads happening here at Live Talking Blues. And so, um, you know, like I said earlier on, each uh, last Wednesday of every month, we have our roving reporter, Jennifer Noble. She is the girl about town, about blues here in London and Chicago and pretty much anywhere else in the world that you can go as well. So we're definitely going to have her on giving us the lowdown of well, some of the gigs that are happening here in London and around the world as well, whatever she's got going on. So let's let's bring Jennifer out of the green room. Um, before I do that, I just want to tell you one other thing is what I'm thinking. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get an update of what's happening every week. And then follow us on Facebook. You will get an update of what's happening every week. Because we've got, what's happening, what's happening? Subscribe and follow, you, you'll know. Jennifer, come on out of the green room. What's happening, girl? Well, no, How look, you doing? <laughs> I too close? You know, I've got no. a web, I've got the webcam, but it's um, you know, I have a really big monitor, so my webcam is sort of balanced on top of the monitor. It's not built in, you know, like on a laptop. So every time I try to put it just where I want it, it just falters. You know, it's like <laughs> I guess I got to tape it. But anyway, hey. I know you can see the reflection in my glasses. Oh, yes, I know. Me too. I know. <laughs> and I, I tried to put on my um, sunglasses, you know, but they, they weren't any better. And so, you know why you can see this probably? Because first of all, the screen's huge and it's white. But also, yeah. I, I have windows uh, to my left and right, and there's probably some sort of re reflection. Oh yeah, you're right. Off of you, that, can, so. you can take your your laptop or whatever your desktop, and you can turn the um the the light down. You know, like turning down the, like a dimmer. You can dim that, but don't worry about it now. Yeah, I'm on um, I'm on my big uh, desktop computer okay. here. You know, no with worries. The, with the big We're screen. Good. We we can you hear know, you and see you. That's the main thing. So how are you doing, true. Jennifer? What's, what's been uh, happening? Uh, lots happening because, you know, things are opening up. I'm telling totally. you, yes. It's so <laughs> exciting. I'm already worn out. I've been to three gigs in less than a week. And I'm like, you know me, I'm a mad woman for going out and supporting live music. But um, I'll tell you what's going on. And one of the most exciting things that I did was last night. I mean, everything's exciting when you get to go out after so long. I'm but you, after all that, I exactly. Went to a new venue last night, and it was the coolest venue I think I've been to in London. Really? It's huge. And guess what? Wow. It is the home of Dana Gillespie, who was in 50 <gasps> Women in the Blues book. Yes. This is her stomping ground. And I saw Bex Marshall there, you know, London's best. Bex Marshall exactly um, performed there last night. And I guess Dana is going to be form, uh, perform there on Thursday. But what's cool about this room, I hope we have enough time to talk. How much time we no, got? We, 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 we good. We're good. We're good. Don't okay. worry. What's cool about this room, first of all, it's huge. Tough to find, though. It's called, uh, it's in the Mercato Metropolitano. 
in Newington Causeway. Okay, so it's right off the bus, short walk from the bus and everything, but you walk in, it looks like a giant food court. And then there's this tiny little door. You go to the right and go in this door and it opens up into this huge venue. I mean, oh like, you know, three times the size of the 100 Club. Uh, I don't think I've ever me. seen music in a bit a venue that big that was actually like just a venue, not like a, you know, a, yeah. a, a big uh, a big place. Uh, but anyway, this guy that owns it collects pianos. <laughs> like a lot of pianos. Wow. So he has pianos everywhere, all over this club. Like he blocks up the aisles with the tables with pianos. Uh, <laughs> there's anything like it, but the stage is huge. So I'm going to tell all blues musicians and stuff to apply at this club. Yes. If it's if it's Dana Gillespie's home stomping ground, you know, yes. it's every blues person should have a chance to. Exactly. Uh, tell them, tell them the name again. Tell them the name again. Okay. So actually the, the nickname of it is called TAM, T-A-M. And that stands for theater of arts and music, but they shortened it to TAM. I know it's a, it's a tough one. Yeah. It's, it's a little secret thing here, but it is super freaking cool. I had the best oh, time. How cool is that? And I had to oh go by God. myself. I had to, she invited me at the last minute, and I, I, I tried like five people to come with. I should have called you, Kat. You probably would have been there. It would have been easy for you to get there, probably. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway, super cool, full full bar, and just um, oh, lots of space, nice. well ventilated, yeah. um, and it's got couches and oh man, I wish I could have made. I was. I was filming last night. I couldn't have made it anyway. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, okay. Well, that's good. Then I don't feel bad. No, no, no. I was actually feeling it. <laughs> and then, and then um, another place that I went, I had a blast. My first outing out last okay. Thursday was over at Paper Dress Vintage in uh, Hackney Central, Hackney, where yes. it's um, it's uh, Sister Cookies, who is also the 50 Women of the Blues Buck. She's just a, a fantastic performer. And uh, she. this seems to be her home ground you know, like Tam is for um, yes. Dana Gillespie. So it's a cool little place because down below during the day or all day and even into the evening, they sell uh -huh. vintage clothing. But then at night, they turn it into a music uh, a venue of stairs. And, uh, you know, and they have constant music. They're not always all blues. But, you know, you just check it. It's just a, and it's a good vibe. Like, and they have a whole outdoor thing with a DJ and everything. Uh, and the drinks are yes. amazing. Yes. And um, you know how, and it's right across the street from the train station, Hackney Central so, Train. So, so, so yeah, get, that, the Hackney Center is on the on the overground, isn't it? And then yeah. just yeah. just cross the road, and you're there. So it's easy access that place. Easy, and it's just cool. a good vibe. You know how when you walk into some place and you just can feel the good vibe, and you just yes. know like this is going to be a good night. Oh yeah, and it I, was, I, it was I, a good night. I had a blast. I, oh, I drank these drinks man. called Pink Anderson. It was a gin, gin drink with raspberries and oh my god, it was Ooh, so good. Don't and then I both drank them. They were delicious. They have a very like some foo foo drinks, but not a lot. Selected okay. few uh, drinks, but anyway, that's a cool place that I went. And, and what's the name of it again? Called Paper. Uh, Paper Dress Vintage. Paper Dress Vintage. That's and cool. Uh, over there in Hackney, off Hackney yeah. Overground, Hackney Overground Central Station. Yeah, Hackney. yeah, yeah. Cool place. Definitely want that place to stick around. So got to yeah, support definitely. it. But like I said, it's not all blues. And, you know, and then Sister Cookie, she plays a little bit of a mix of everything. Yeah. But she has her own cool sound. Um, but anyway, then um, on Saturday, I went to Ain't Nothing But. Uh, Ain't Nothing But is uh, in Soho. is open yeah. again. Where and they are places? Uh, playing, I think, music seven nights a week. And they mm -hmm. remodeled uh, slightly. Uh, oh, not, okay. It's not even bigger, but they redid the windows did, in front. Did they, do the, did they do the toilets? And they got rid of the little kitchen area they have? What did you say? Yeah. Did they did, do did what? They remodel the, did they remodel the toilets yet? Uh, actually, they didn't smell. <laughs> they didn't smell. I think... It's a good place. Don't did. get us wrong. Don't get us wrong. It's proper, but you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. Now, now they did have a lot of air freshener down there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better than what it used to be. Let me tell you. Yeah. Hello, and big shout out to Kevin as well, though. Big shout. Out. You got a good thing going on. It's an institution. No, no, That's... no. Listen to me. Listen to me. Kevin sold it. Kevin doesn't no. own it anymore. Oh my and god. He sold it to uh, like uh, one employee. One of the employees is Rob, a regular guy, Rob, and he helps run it with another guy, I think, that might have bought it. But Rob is still there 
forever and ever. Like, and he, he, he runs it. And, uh, so anyway, that is, um, that I had a blast because, uh, yeah. first of all, uh, Chris Corcoran, Cochran, I get Cochran, names. Yeah, yeah. Cochran, yeah, yeah. 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 He's a phenomenal guitar player. He started out and then Tommy Hare, which I wasn't expecting came in and he plays there. I think kind of on a regular basis, maybe. Uh -huh. And then Chad Strutz and um, Pete Ferruccia yeah. finished off the night. And oh boy, did they sound oh great. Oh my God, so they had a couple bands on. That's really good. Three so bands. Yeah. And three, it's free. Three bands, three hours of music then, was it? And free, they just pass around the tip jar. Um, and I hear they're paying, just FYI, to Kat, who's a musician, they're paying like almost double what they used to be paying there. Um, Which I heard they didn't pay much, but yeah, I heard yeah, but, a lot you know, better. For musicians, you guys out there, musicians making a living, you guys got to hit this place up. It's behind Hamley's um, in the West End. But it, that's good they're paying because we, we, we you forget that we do have to make a living as musicians. You know right. what I mean? So thank you for that information, Jennifer. I, we, we appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, so that's opened up. It has brand new windows in front. Of course, it has an outdoor area. And where they used to have a tiny little kitchen area, yeah. they've gotten rid of that now and put up a couple more tables. They're in the back towards the windows. But okay. still, the place is tiny. Any time they can make more space for the people it's all good so that's right. uh that's right. yeah, definitely that's back in business uh so let's move on let's move on um okay. sure, sure. i've got so much to tell big joe lewis uh i did kind of look at the blues kitchens in here in london and big joe lewis is um back on Sundays, uh, two Sundays in June, but then in July, he's there every Sunday. Now, if you've never seen Big Joe Lewis, he is a legend, you know, uh, yes. highly recommend it. You know, it's a Sunday night, but you know, they're usually done by 10 or 10.30. Uh, so, Bruce Kitchen? Which Bruce Kitchen? Okay, so he plays at the one in Shoreditch. Okay, Shoreditch. Not yeah, the one in Camden. There's Not several the Blues Kitchen. There's, there's Shoreditch, Camden, and Brixton, isn't there? Yeah, but the Brixton one doesn't have I don't know. They don't have as much. I think they have music, but not as much. Like, uh, I think uh, Shoreditch is a huge, huge venue. Well, they're all yes. pretty big, except for the Camden one's the smallest. Yes. But um, I looked on the Camden one, and they didn't have any live. A lot of DJing and, you know, soul DJ. And so, you know, there's always blues and soul playing uh, playing there. But um and then they had a gospel brunch there or gospel singer or something there. But anyway, okay. uh, check their websites. I'm, I'm sure they'll pick up live music sooner or later. Uh, but anyway, Big Joe Lewis, I, he's, I, I love going to see him as much as I can. And uh, so that's worth the trip. Okay. Uh, but let's say, so I put it on Facebook. I told people to uh, send me their live music gigs. And uh, I got some here. Um our good friend, uh, the Cry Daddy Blues Band, which is mm -hmm. the first gig out of lockdown is at the Barley Mo in Shepperton on Friday, July 2nd. Okay. And okay. then they'll be back in September, November, and December. But the thing about the Cry Daddy Blues Band, they play that old early R&B, and they've been together since the 1960s, this band, playing in this. Southwest London area. I mean, come on. You think they got it down pat? <laughs> definitely got it down oh, wow. they love what they do obviously you know <laughs> and then, yeah and then uh you know because i'm in the southwest london area here uh, i live uh, just a few blocks from the eel pie club that's right and, uh you know their first gig is going to be thursday june 24th uh, well, the the reopening party, I think they have a couple gigs before that, but they might be sold out. But anyway, um, their big reopening party is on Thursday, June 24th, mm -hmm. with the Eel Pie All-Stars, plus yeah. guest vocalist Kat Pearson. Yeah, yeah, and big shout out to Warren and Gina. They're running the Eel Pie. So hello, guys. And they'll be coming on to talk about that uh, 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 just before the opening as well. So we're looking forward yeah. to that one, definitely. But, yeah. But another thing they told me to mention these days, on July 8th, they got the Sinelli brothers. Those guys are fabulous. That's fantastic. Um, no. They're going to be, yeah, July 8th. And then Atomic Rooster, you know, with Peter French on July yeah. 15th. And then on July 29th, Peter Donegan and the band Lonnie Donegan's son. So yes. that's pretty cool. That's the event. And the Eel Pie is, is where's the Eel Pie? Please give us a little Yeah, the Eel Pie is uh, nice and convenient because it's uh, across this, uh, uh, it's like kind of kitty corner from the 
Um, it's the first bar you hit when you go over the bridge uh, at the Twickenham station. So it's like stops from the Twickenham station. So you could take the train there, leave by, you know, 10 to 11 or right. Jennifer, in, can I just yeah. ask a question, please? Um, sure. You're from Chicago. I'm from Los Angeles, right? And here uh -huh. we're, all, we're broadcasting all over the world. But uh, there's a word that you said. I'm not sure if the British know about that word. It's called, you said kitty corner. Oh, they don't know. They don't, <laughs> they don't know. What, they, don't, they got roundabouts here. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the cabbage patch is just, you can almost see it when you come out of the train station. If yeah, you just look of, yeah, diagonally. You look diagonally. That's kitty corner, diagonally. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I got all kinds of language that I use that people don't understand here. Uh, I, you get used to it after 10 years, <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting me know that. But, uh, Hold on, let me flip back to my Facebook page here. Sure. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry. No, no, that's good. I, <laughs> call me out. It's why, why, why are you doing that? Jennifer is here. I want to tell everyone, Jennifer is here the last Wednesday of every month. She's a roving reporter um, telling you what's happening in, in England and around the world. Depending where she is, you'll find out any gig. So remember to send your gigs in and she can tell everyone what's happening. And also yeah. to subscribe and to, to follow so you can keep abreast. Go ahead. And Jennifer. you know, um, Barry Duckett, who puts on now another word I can't pronounce, Rother Height. How do you say that? Rother Height. Rother Height? Yes. Festival? Yes, okay, so. that is going on this year. It was canceled, you know, last year. And he puts a lot of effort into it. He books all blues. And it's okay. free. And it's July 17th. And so that's his name? Tell, tell everyone uh, his name again. It's Barry Duckett, who's in charge of it. He's, he's lived uh, most of his life in Southwark. How do you say it? Southwark? Southwark, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so he puts on this festival, and he books all blues. I think Paul Cox is playing there. I can't remember the lineup, but... It's a just a tiny little festival, but you know, for an afternoon. I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of music. it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, it starts at like two o'clock and goes till yeah. dark. I don't know. And anyway, it's just a cool little free festival that just happens to book all blues, and that's rare. You don't yeah. find that all the time at a festival in London, uh, outdoor festival in London. Um, so anyway, uh, let's. Uh, I can't forget to mention Mike Rivers. So. Yes. After you go out on Thursday to the grand reopening at the Old Pie Club, then you skip over to Richmond on Friday after you take a long nap on Friday afternoon <laughs> and catch up. And on June 25th, uh, the Mustangs are going to open up the Crawdaddy Club. Mustang and we're band, glad yeah. to see that opening up again because yeah. that is a fantastic venue, very spacious, uh -huh. uh, lots of room, and tickets are only 10 pounds still well 13 at the door but um you know the mustangs they're they're a great band they've been playing around for a long time powerhouse of powerhouse of a band yes yeah Definitely. so so that's that would be a good and we want to support that because we want to keep keep uh and that that's a, a 10 minute walk from the richmond station uh -huh. over at the the Crawdaddy club which is the what do you call that the scottish or the rugby field i don't know what is it oh, over yeah, there yeah 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 it's athletic ground it's on um, richmond yeah, athletic athletic ground. Ground. were yeah. there rolling stones originally played that's right that's right they, they played were... at the richmond athletic ground yeah that's right uh, a lot of famous bands played there the yardbirds too and mike rivers was nice enough to have this idea to open it up and make it a live uh blues uh, blues, Back mostly again. blues venue. Uh, yeah. So it's he does large as well, isn't it? It can hold quite a few people in there as well, couldn't it? Huge, yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a. And he only does it once a month, so you don't want to miss it. I think he's going to do the Phoenix Festival again this year in August That's too. That's right. In August, which, is the Phoenix Festival August, is it? Which yeah, which is right down at the Richmond uh, River. I think it's. Wait a minute. Is it July? Is it July or August? The Phoenix oh, Festival. I've got it written down here. I'll tell you in a minute. They're yeah, July I should know, but I'm usually in Chicago for it. So That's I right. missed it. I've got so. Sunday, July 25th, Phoenix Festival. There you go. That's it. Um, uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you corrected me on that one. Um, okay, so I guess we're on a, uh, I haven't checked the 100 Club, what's going on with them yet, but I imagine... 
uh, you know, we got June, uh, June 21st and everything's supposed to reopen. So oh, 21st of June. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's not long, but everyone's booking and um, I don't have a lot of festivals to report on yet. But being, I think, the festivals are being very they have to be very cautious gigs and yeah. venues are one thing but festivals they they yeah. they, they 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 take a lot of lot more planning you know what i mean and um yeah and so but we, we we're talking about a venue we're going to take a small break in a minute and what we're going to do is we're going to show a venue maybe for about three or four minutes this venue is called the green note in camden now yeah, the green just, note in camden is a small venue holds about 60 people or so uh standing okay. uh, yeah at, but it okay. has two floors two floors there and um what we're gonna do is in, in just a second we'll play a little bit of that footage so we can see that but carry on for right now because i want to let okay i just got one that. more i got to talk about my friend trev turley and i because he has a gig on august 19th with the mojo preachers celebrating their 50th anniversary tour day and the, under the bridge in Chelsea's a fabulous venue, um, uh, just a great venue. And then he's got October 19th, the 100 Club to support their uh, Mojo Preachers, their support to break it down. That's down the road, but we're real glad the 100 Club is opening again. That's good news. But uh, one of my favorite venues is that under the bridge classy joint oh, that is such a brilliant place oh my god the, the, they have a lot of money to invest in that uh what's great as a photographer the lighting there is fabulous oh, yeah, everybody god, yes. everybody on that stage who gets photographed as an artist uh, those pictures should be you could put, put them in magazines you know now, who's uh, playing there again well mojo preachers chap turley is a long time face for yeah. exactly. a lot of bands and yeah. he's got he just put out um I don't know, like a special limited edition CD. Uh, I, I forget the details. Anyway, I just wanted to, he's the last one that I have to mention. Okay. And, um, but I just want to say one more thing real quick too. Okay. If um, you subscribe to Blues in Britain magazine and Blues Matters magazines, yes. they will list a lot of gigs. I mean, Blues in Britain has a special section where it's like three pages long of all the gigs that are going to be happening. So it's worth the, to subscribe just for that, to know, to see everything that's happening uh, all over, you know, it, and uh, they do a really good job. So cool, anyway, cool, that's cool, it. Cool, cool, cool. That's Is all that I got. Great. <laughs> okay, listen, just stay, stay, stay right there. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna play this video, and we're gonna come back and say goodbye to everybody. Would you hang on just a little bit longer for us? Sure. Okay, then let's just have, have a little look at this. Um, it's me, anyway. <laughs> All right. I don't want to talk about it. Hi, my name's Kat Pearson. I'm a blues singer. Live in London from Los Angeles, California. Never did I know how it would be. This venue is a great award-winning venue. And um, I've been playing here for about the last three years or so. Well, I felt the earth. Would open up and swallow me whole. People come pass through here on tour. Did they pass through here because they're local, like myself. They pass through here for many reasons. There's blues, jazz, folk, and a bit of soul you as love well. Your touch, your beautiful soul. I can with me wherever I go. Well, tonight we've got something going back to our roots concert, back to my roots concert, and um, we've got Francesco Ocuso on guitar. Vincenzo Bergelito on uh, bass and double bass. Cat, I think you're superb. You've got total confidence. Fantastic. Really good, authentic blues. Really good job. I think it's great. She's really feeling and um, singing with passion, so it's really great. It was brilliant. She's brilliant. It's Friday night, Halloween parties and shit, isn't it? I got some spooky stuff at home. I'm serious, man. Anybody coming back, you welcome, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes, the album is being mixed now in the United States. Um, I haven't titled it yet, 
I think it's going to be When the Blues is Over, but I'm not sure. For some reason, the title's not sticking, but the album's being mastered now. My daddy said, come sit next to me. I got something I want you to hear. I'm gonna tell you a story how it used to be back when I was a kid. It was some hard days, but I long for the old days down on Tanky. And uh, it'll be out um, in the next couple of weeks, or so definitely for Christmas. And there's a book that's um, written by Jennifer Noble. And uh, it's a blues book about blues women, and I'm featured in that book as well. So the album and the book will be coming out around the same time of the year. We had the most fantastic time. Thank you, Kat. I've always sung the blues. It's part of my DNA. I knew it. I knew it like the back of my hand because it was always played in my house. And then somebody turned on the heat and it got really hot. Great. I was jamming. <laughs> you got such a powerful voice. Yeah. So much character on stage. It's amazing. <laughs> That's up. That's right. Totally boosted up our whiskey sales. <laughs> when the blues is over, go buy me a big car. Cruise down the street just like a big star. When the blues is over, go make the big bucks. Find me a good woman while I'm making a stack. You see, no one can tell me the hell. What to do? Yeah, the, the audience was really good. The audience, they, they, they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, but I could feel the energy as well. Great evening. Wonderful. Ah, that's cool. That's, yeah, that, that, that's a great venue, isn't it? My website, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I've been there a couple, couple of times. The yeah. There. And the album pictures, okay. videos, and but not on um, purpose. Really like I just, I don't know. I just, fit, I go out all the time, but it's just because um, it has a downstairs, doesn't it? It has a, it has upstairs a small and... downstairs, about fifteen people. So it's usually for like a duo or a solo pianist or something like that. There's an upright piano in there as well. And yeah, I saw Mark about fifteen people. Mark Harrison down there. That's um, it. Yeah, I did want to mention that. Yeah, my book is now out in paper book. Yes. paperback thanks paperback. for mentioning 50 women of the boost but i think it's still at the publisher over here in the uk so not in the u.s yet but and if if you look at the bottom of the screen it says there as well 50 women in blues it's on amazon and waterstones and it gives a, a, the a, the facebook um link as well if you look at the bottom of the screen it's scrolling oh, is, the, is it listed in paperback on amazon i should probably check that i will have to double check that 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 was written, that was check, written, out, check out my was, own book <laughs> yeah that was written when the hardcover was when it was done but yeah we'll, we'll we'll double check that but you can still get can you still get the heart back as well no Okay, not wow. it, not in the UK. It's sold out, and okay. she didn't reprint it. I have like nine copies on my shelf, okay. and that's it. Well, anybody want a book? Get in touch with Jennifer on Facebook. <laughs> Kat, tell me, tell me a Facebook or you where they can get the book, please, Jennifer. Uh, I do have a Fifty Women in the Blues Facebook page, and Fifty I am on Facebook blues. a lot too much sometimes. Okay. But <laughs> I know guilt is charged, but that's why I started making my earrings. See, I got my earrings now that I make. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Jennifer also them. does musical earring for music, isn't it? Yeah, I try that. My focus is on musical earrings. Sometimes people want other designs, but I have almost a hundred pairs now on my Etsy shop, Jam and Gems, I call them. Okay, and that's uh, J spell that, please. Spell that for us. Jam I know, J A M M I N. Gems, J E double M. Gem and gems. Okay. Yeah, a lot of M's. Yeah, but it sounds it sounds great though. Gem and gems. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah, I, definitely. Yeah, I you just, know I I'm having a lot of fun making making this jewelry and uh, you know I most of my customers are of course in the U S because I'm from the U S but uh, uh -huh. uh, I'm just I just love doing it you know and and I started it to donate more to musicians. I was donating so much that's to what I was gonna ask you. Yeah, that's right. And so then I thought, how can I raise more money? And then, uh, you know, also because I thought back that I've been on Facebook now almost 13 years or yeah. 12, I don't know, a long time. Yeah. And I go, you know, maybe you should try to do something more. 
Okay. Sit on Facebook all day. Go, go make some jewelry. Do something, you know, yeah, besides my day job. Yeah, and the, and the, and some of the proceeds go to the musicians because when during lockdown yeah. they needed some help and they didn't get a lot of government help, did we? Really? <laughs> yeah. Every basically every cent I made, I donated back. That's it crazy. was easy. It was easy. Yeah, it was, well, I'm sure it was <laughs> easy, easy to yeah. donate it back because there's a lot of us that, that were hurting. But, you know, things yeah. are opening up again. And thank you for telling everybody what's happening. Um, you can go on, on Jennifer's uh, Facebook page um, to find out any of the any of the gigs. And uh, people are posting what they want to do. Yeah, and, do you think uh, we should post them? Um, do you think I should post them here at, in your feed? Yeah, you post them the there in Live Talking Blues. Definitely post it in Live Talking Blues. Yeah, I could and do that. Go, go, go to Live Talking Blues and you can find out any gigs that you can go to. Find out what's happening around town because we are the one-stop shop of gigs and, 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 and situations that all blues, all types of blues, and it's happening here at Live Talking Blues. Remember to, to follow us and to subscribe as well. If you didn't yeah. do it already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had fun. Thanks for inviting me on. And we're going to see you next month. Would that be okay? You come back and visit with us? And yeah, but I mean, it might be in Chicago. Okay. Um, if you so are. What, are, what are you talking about? Like the 22nd or the following week? The, the last Wednesday of every month is what we're looking at. But yeah, if you, well, look, if, even if you're not in London, and you got your phone or something, we can also catch up with you wherever you are. That is what I wanted to do. If you're in London at a venue or if you're in the United States at a venue, we'd definitely catch up with you on the ground with you. That is the idea. So people can see what's happening. Uh, it's a technical yeah, thing that we got to work out. It'd be fun to report from Chicago. I, so it's real touchy because I have to work almost to that date. So we'll, I will update you and let you know. You let us know. If not, we, we do whatever's convenient for you because you're giving us a great gift. And we'll work on that. Thanks. We'll definitely work on that. Yeah. I, I love doing this. I love doing okay. it. Well, before we go, can we say hello to Patsy over in, in Studio 2? Patsy, what's Hi, Patsy. happening? <laughs> Thank you. Big help. I hope the sound on. was good. Sound was good. Yeah. Because I got my professional, I have my professional D, DJ mic. See? Wait, can you see it? See? Oh, yeah. Oh, That's when I was in my radio show. So I've got my professional uh, DJ mic here. Ken Howe. If I can only get this webcam right. Don't worry. <laughs> We're getting ready to go. And you know, okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Patsy. You're going to have to take us home. See, okay. see you later, everybody. We'll see you next week, next Wednesday. <laughs>